was useless. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. Um, so Entru is a crypto system which was published in 1998, and it uses uh, some rings, uh, which is essentially a cyclotomic ring. Um, and it was quickly attacked la later using lattice reduction. And after the uh, attacks were finally understood, but Tenchu was used with a much larger modulus for building some uh, more exotic crypto. But uh, then the previous years, the build attacks were published and they decreased massively the security of this overstretch Tenchu. So we gave in the paper another subfield attack, but uh, we also discussed the actual behavior of uh, straightforward lattice reduction, which is just as fast, so I will just cover this one here. Uh, so first, uh, toy crypto system, so it's entry without number theory, so it's true. Uh, so the toy crypto system, uh, so we sample some small random invertible matrices, F and G of dimension N, and uh, they will be the secret key. The public key is H, which is the inverse of F times G mod some Q, a uh, small integer. And if you want to encrypt, then you sample some small vector S and E, and you send HS plus E, which is essentially an LWE crypto system here. And if you want to decrypt, you multiply on the left by F, and due to the definition of, S, uh, of H, then this is equal to G times S plus F times E. And uh, uh, you can see that since uh, J and S are small matrices and vectors, uh, and the same for F and E, then uh, this is small. So uh, in this way, we can uh, have a secure Gaussian channel, and therefore we can communicate reliably. So there are a few details here that uh, I will hide because they don't matter for the rest of the talk. So uh, now, uh, I will present the Copper Smith May attack. So uh, we have F times H. Uh, so due to our definition, this is equal to G plus K, uh, ma an integer matrix K times Q. And so we can consider this lattice. Uh, so uh, you have uh, this lattice. Uh, it is made so that it contains a sub lattice, which is of high rank but low volume. So uh, why this is a small lat uh, why this is a sub lattice? You just multiply by this vector. So uh, the bottom row is obvious, and the uh, upper row is just given by the equation above. Uh, transpose. So we also have that any short vector of this lattice will allow to distinguish a message from uniform, and so we can run lattice reduction on this basis, such as dbkz. And the question is, when does it work? Of course. So we can make a simple analysis of this algorithm. So uh, the vector given uh, with the complexity uh, 2 to the b is of size bounded by this. So square root of q is the determinant to the power 1 over the dimension. And the second part is the approximation factor. So if we want a polynomial algorithm, we must have a beta, which is small, and this forces a modulus, which is almost exponential. Uh, but is this lower bound tight? Uh, it's unclear. And so in order to uh, answer this question, uh, so we have uh, the following other lattice reduction works. So in all experiments that you can make, uh, either lattice reduction detects a small volume la sub lattice which is hidden, or it behaves as if the lattice were random. And therefore, if lattice reduction fails, you can reliably predict all the Gram-Schmidt norms of the output basis. So how to distinguish the two cases then? Well, uh, there is this property after lattice reduction, uh, the basis is as random as possible, but no random. So this means that we, ha we have, for example, this theorem, which says that the shortest vector of the lattice, which is non-zero, must be larger than the minimum of the Gram-Schmidt norms. So this theorem must be uh, followed by the output. So uh, if this is not, then we conclude that the lattice reduction fails, and therefore we find the secret. Uh, but is the converse almost true? Uh, and so is no. So uh, we have this uh, main lattice property that we use for our algorithm, and this is due to Patek Chiantural. So if you have A, a matrix, and U, an integer matrix with uh, R columns, 
then the volume of the product is must be larger than the product of the R smallest Gram-Schmidt norms of A. So if you take R equal 1, then this gives the previous theorem. And the proof is as follows. So uh, we can uh, say that A is triangular due to uh, Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. We can also take U, which is in Hermit normal form, because we can multiply it on the right by any integer invertible matrix without changing the the theorem. And so uh, this means that we can have U in this form with any uh, rows of star uh, in it, uh, any number every time. Uh, so now you can consider the Gram-Schmidt norms of, the of AU. Uh, so the first one will be larger than uh, the index uh, corresponding to the entry V0, uh, which is larger than 1. Uh, and the second, the for the second vector, then uh, the orthogonalization will uh, change the value corresponding to the uh, top uh, of U, uh, but not the bottom. So we know that the Gram-Schmidt norm is larger than the index, uh, than the Gram-Schmidt norm of A with index V1, and the sa it is the same for the other. And finally, the volume of the uh, that this AU is the product of the Gram-Schmidt norms. Okay, so now in our case, uh, we can show that the volume of uh, the sublattice of crank N is bounded by N to the N. This is simply the Adama bound. And due to LLL reduction, we know that Gram-Schmidt norm decreases at most by a constant factor. So in case of failure, we expect Gram-Schmidt norm to be constant and equal to two, followed by a geometric decrease, and then one. And therefore, the last n values consist, which are the smallest, consist of a geometric decrease starting at the square root of q followed by some 1. And it's uh, very simple to compute the product. Uh, this is uh, this formula. But then we remark that the uh, log q appears in uh, the, the square which appears. So this is too large for q is, is uh, around 2 to the square root of n. So this is much smaller than what we had before. Uh, so I it's very easy to determine asymptotically the minimum block size for breaking uh, Hulu instance. And we make the same deviation in the paper for LWE, also ring equivalent. And uh, we use the dual BKZ algorithm, which is the fastest uh, today. And uh, it uh, appears that uh, Ru is weaker than LWE for Q which are larger than n to the 2.78. Uh, so what we have for large q is that it's weaker when the noise is up to square root of q divided by n q, which is not uh, optimal. So can we prove this behavior? Because uh, the previous uh, claim were heuristics. Turns out that a bit, yes. So if the first smaller first vector is small, uh, has a norm smaller than square root of q, then this is a success. We can efficiently decode, uh, can effic efficiently distinguish. Uh, so we can assume otherwise. And now among the n smallest Gram-Schmidt norms, there are k which are less than square root of q. Uh, we, uh, we, we let m equal to uh, log alpha of square root of q, which is just the length of the decrease. And we consider the first L, which is the minimum of Km, first of this. But now Gram-Schmidt norm completely decreases, so uh, they are larger than Q to the L over 2 uh, times alpha to the minus L squared divided by 2. And so the total product, uh, so the other ones that we did not consider are less larger than square root of Q. Um, and the total product uh, is larger than uh, this because all the Gram-Schmidt norm are larger than one. This is a property due to LLL. Uh, but then we have a contradiction uh, with uh, our property on the product of the n smallest uh, vectors, uh, uh, of the sublattice uh, with a, a small volume. Um, however, the condition that Gram-Schmidt norms are larger than one is incorrect for the dual BKZ algorithm. Uh, so we do not prove that we recover the full sublattice. So we can recover a constant fraction uh, times n vectors in the full uh, in the sublattice, uh, but we don't know. Uh, what, uh, actually, the we need a much larger Q if you want to recover all of them. 
so this is a bit incomplete. Um, so uh, can we prove that we do recover the full sub-lattice? Uh, this will be quite interesting uh, for uh, uh, theoretical purposes. Uh, this seems to be a uh, quite nice uh, problem that was not uh, studied before, apparently. Uh, an alternative way of um, having uh, an equivalent theorem is to uh, prove uh, some kind of johnson linden source lemma for lattices. Uh, so this means that uh, if you, uh, if you f want to find the smallest uh, AX mod Q uh, with uh, some uh, uh, very uh, tall matrix A, then you can just consider some few uh, lines and hopefully this will work. And so if we have this kind of theorem, then uh, we can show that <coughs> our algorithm will work easily. Uh, but we don't know how to do that. Uh, another possibility uh, is uh, to, uh, right now, all previous uh, algorithms for uh, were made for minimizing the shortest vector span. And so this is a new problem. And uh, so there was one paper which is a bit on this subject, but uh, I mean, there is hope that uh, we can uh, do better than just applying uh, a well-known algorithm for minimizing the shortest vector and solve this other problem efficiently. And, and, and uh, another open problem is what is the set of Gram-Schmidt norms of other of all other bases given that the Gram-Schmidt norms of one basis. So because the whole point of the algorithm is that uh, with this new uh, constraint, uh, then we, we, force, uh, we force the LLL to work. Um, so it would be nice to show that this is, uh, uh, that this constraint, constraint describes the whole set. It, it seems that in practice, uh, uh, in practice, uh, these constraints are tight as far as our experiment on uh, N2 goes, uh, but uh, maybe it is not the case. So in conclusion, uh, lattice reduction is not some kind of dark magic that works only in trips, uh, but it's an experimental science. And crypto system which can be quickly broken with LLL were proposed. So there was one example of uh, homomorphic encryption scheme uh, the proposed computation took around one day, and we took also around one day to uh, compute the secret key. Uh, and so this speaks volume about the lack of experiments made uh, in this uh, area, I think. Also, there is no reason to prefer N2 to ring at W, or who to LW for public key or key exchange. Uh, so don't reinvent the rule. So this is actually, uh, so ring LWE are, uh, and LWE have more security, but, uh, uh, and they don't have any structure. So uh, you should prefer them and uh, everything else goes uh, nicely. All techniques uh, work for both case. Uh, as far as uh, more exotic cryptos like ID signatures and so on, they are not yet threatened because uh, our limit exponent was uh, around 2.8. And we need to go much lower, like uh, 1.5, I think, to uh, threaten anything. Uh, but in the general case, uh, adding structure is bad with respect to longevity of crypto systems. So uh, if you absolutely want to do it, then you should compare with al alternatives based on uh, ring at I, I, I think. Uh, also, you should uh, cryptanalyze N2 or who, and uh, as far as cryptanalysis is concerned, you can almost forget about ring at W, uh, in particular because you have a reduction between the two, uh, so, uh, and there is an almost. And also, uh, do not use the root Hermit factor uh, because, well, I did not use it, and if you use it, you will show that you will arrive at a very low root hermit factor, uh, which is way below what you can uh, expect with LLL. So, uh, if you want to express the security of some lattice crypto systems, then you can uh, 
and just uh, give the uh, block size that you need uh, to in order to uh, uh, destroy the scheme. So thanks for your attention. It is Pierre Van Nijen. Okay, thank you. Do we have uh, any question for the speaker? Okay. Um, maybe I have one. Uh, so, uh, is there any impact of this attack on uh, LWE or Ring LWE problems, as far as you can tell? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, the reason is that if you use the equivalent statistics for uh, Ring LWE, then you will have only, uh, well, you either you can consider a CVP problem or BDD problem, um, but this, uh, then you can't use this technique, or you can embed one vector, but then uh, you just have a sublattice of rank one, which is of uh, low volume, and so here you need N for it to work uh, nicely. Uh, and finally, you can always embed the whole uh, uh, ring, uh, but then uh, you have a 3n matrix of uh, you have a matrix of dimension 3n, and you add that the last 2n uh, gram schmidt norm are equal to one. So having the n smallest is much more difficult. Uh, so having the product of the n smallest uh, larger than one is much more difficult than uh, having just one actually uh, larger than one. So uh, there is uh, no impact uh, whatsoever on any uh, ring LWE or LWE crypto system. Okay, so let's thank the speaker. Oh, sorry, Martin. No, we, we do have a lot of time. <coughs> go ahead. <coughs> okay, then I go slow down. Uh, <laughs> just, just a quick question. Uh, was there a mention of LLL? Can it go the trick being broken by LLL? Can you just expand on that a little bit? Uh, what exactly? What I mentioned of LLL that you need to run when you say kind of like propose crypto systems, do you do you run some experiments? Like what kind of LLL instances did you look at to break the particular instance? Go back to your last slide. My last slide? Very last. Yeah, you say crypto systems which can quickly quickly broken with LLL were proposed. Yes. All I'm asking is how big were these LLL instances? Uh, so the biggest one, I think it was, uh, we needed uh, to run it in dimension 1000 and around 1000 bits in the entries. There are a bit smaller one. Uh, yeah. So this takes quite some time, uh, but it's one day of computation, and so it's quite reasonable. More questions? Yes. Nicolas. Uh, yes, I have one small question. So you, s you said uh, do not use the root permit factor, uh, but uh, uh, overall, um, so y y you still use the basically the, the root permit factor, but just not in the full lattice, but in the sub lattices. No, what you can do is uh, simulate the behavior of your lattice reduction algorithm. So you can compute exactly what will be the Gram-Schmidt norm. And so uh, this is not a slope, a simple line, okay? Uh, so what you have is actually a line followed by a parabola if you use the dual BKZ algorithm. And so uh, if you use the root permit factor, then you are uh, actually assuming that it will be a line. And it's Absolutely. not the case, in particular, when uh, you have a large box size. So if you want to attack n true or ring LWE, it's not at all uh, a good approximation. Okay, yeah. 